from Washington, D.C., this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Hannah Zuberi. First, the headlines. 25% of U.S. senators have fossil fuel investment. Climate change is threatening the Great Lakes living. Some Afghans are receiving aid in acute food shortage. Anti-Muslim hate crimes make nearly half of the religiously aggravated offenses in the United Kingdom. Human rights lawyers exposing attacks on 12 Indian mosques charged. Our top story tonight. A new report published Friday reveals that U.S. senators who would pass climate legislation are heavily invested in the fossil fuel industry. According to the Sludge Report, 28 senators own fossil fuel assets. These range from a minimum of $3.7 million up to $12.6 million. At least half a dozen of these senators sit on committees related to the environment or climate. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has pledged the U.S. will slash greenhouse gas emissions in half from 2005 levels by the end of the decade. Joe Manchin, a West Virginia Democrat, has received more than $1 million from Enner's system. That is a coal brokerage firm he founded in the 1980s. Manchin chairs the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. He has worked to dilute climate action in the recently passed Build Back Better Act. The five bodies of water that make up North America's Great Lakes account for more than 20% of the world's fresh water supply. And they always have risen and fallen over the decades. But climate change has made these extremes much stronger than before. Great Lakes residents are installing hurricane shutters and signs of erosion are becoming severe. Researcher Aaron Packman warns the area will be seeing increasing lakefront damage and inland flooding. We're going to face two issues. We're going to see increasing lakefront damage and we're going to see increasing inland flooding. So the big concern is either facilities or communities or homes that are in those areas that are highly vulnerable. A lot of them are seeing damage already and they'll likely see worse damage in the future. Chicago waterfront resident Kara Slaughter has this to say. The waves come from way across the lake. They come in fast and furiously. They hit our uh, supporting structure that is our breakwater, jump over it, toss our jersey blocks around, hits our building, comes under the door, and, and we've watched it coming from out in the middle of the lake. Newly elected New Jersey State Senator Edward Durr has come under fire for controversial social media posts insulting Islam. Durr won the District 3 seat last Thursday in an unlikely upset, ousting longtime State Senate President Steve Sweeney. Two Muslim civil rights advocacy groups have called on Durr to repudiate an offensive tweet from 2019. In it, he insulted Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and called Islam a false religion and a cult. Durr offered an apology for his past tweets on Thursday. U.S. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and the peace group Code Pink condemned Israeli forces murder of a 13-year-old Palestinian boy in the occupied West Bank last Friday. Middle East Eye reports that Israeli soldiers shot Mohammed Daddas in the stomach during a confrontation last week. The Das was from the Askar refugee camp in Nablus. He was murdered in Deir al-Hattab, a village east of Nablus, where Israeli settlers have been repeatedly attacking Palestinians in the last month. The Palestinian health ministry said the Das died in a Nablus hospital late Friday. Rashida Tlaib is a Michigan Democrat and the first Palestinian-American woman elected to Congress. In a tweet after the Das's death, she said, our country must stop enabling the killing of children. The United States gives nearly $4 billion in annual military aid to Israel. The Mississippi branch of the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, has filed a complaint against the city of Horn Lake, 
for denying a permit to a mosque. The complaint claims that there are no mosques in DeSoto County. This forces worshipers to drive to Memphis. The two plaintiffs seeking to build a mosque in Horn Lake were denied the permit despite meeting and exceeding site plan requirements. ACLU Legal Director Joshua Tom said that the proposed mosque, the Abraham House of God, would be on a street already zoned for houses of worship. During an April meeting, Elderman voted to deny the permit. City's Planning Commission, Elderman, and Mayor are named in the lawsuit. U.S. Senator Josh Howley, a Republican from Missouri, said Sunday there was a crisis of American men. Howley attacked liberal ideology, political beliefs, and changing cultural norms that he believes are degrading traditional ideas of masculinity. His comments came during a keynote speech to the National Conservatism Conference in Orlando, Florida. Howley said men must be held responsible for their actions. He blamed years of men being told their manhood is the problem for more men withdrawing into pornography and video games. According to a 2014 survey by the organization Relationships in America, 43% of men and 9% of women reported watching pornography in the past week. Howley asked attendees to employ working men at living wages. In international news today, the World Food Program estimates that over 22 million Afghans more than half of the population face acute food insecurity. It also said over 3 million Afghan children suffer acute malnutrition. In rural areas, farmers have been hit by the worst drought in 27 years. Meanwhile, the national currency, the Afghani, has dropped to an all-time low against the dollar, driving up prices of imports. Since June, wheat flour prices have climbed 31% and fuel by 27%. In October, the World Food Program provided emergency relief to over 1 million Afghans. But the international community refuses to recognize the Taliban, which overthrew the previous U.S.-backed government in mid-August. Now Afghanistan's national reserves are blocked abroad, mainly in the U.S. And the Afghan economy is on the verge of collapse. Tens of thousands of Ethiopians vowed to defend their capital, Addis Ababa, from advancing rebels during a pro-military rally on Sunday. Attendees of the rally dismissed diplomatic efforts to end the year-long war. It was the latest attempt to shore up public support for the conflict against the Tigray People's Liberation Front and allied groups. It came five days after the government declared a nationwide state of emergency to seemingly protect civilians from the rebels. U.S. official Jeffrey Feltman arrived in Ethiopia on Thursday to broker an end to the hostilities. The U.S. embassy has ordered non-emergency staff to leave the country. Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al-Khadami escaped an assassination attempt unhurt. An explosive-packed drone hit al Khadami's Baghdad residence early Sunday. It's the latest escalation in country's post-election turmoil. Three drones were launched from near a Tigris River bridge. Two drones were intercepted. Two of al Khadami's bodyguards were wounded, security sources said. The attack came two days after security forces clashed with supporters of Iran-backed parties that lost support in the October 10th parliamentary election. Those parties claimed there were voting irregularities. The Fatah Alliance, the political arm of the pro-Iran Hashid al-Shabi paramilitary network, lost considerable seats. Sierra Leone President Julius Mada Bayo announced three days of mourning starting on Monday. This was after more than 100 people were killed in a fuel tanker explosion in the capital, Freetown. Two days of prayers also are planned after the mourning period. Flags will be flown at half mass. Bayo said he was deeply disturbed by the tragic fires and the horrific loss of life. 
92 victims with various degrees of burns have been hospitalized in Freetown, according to the National Disaster Management Agency. The agency has launched a daily emergency blood drive starting this morning. Nearly half the recorded religious hate crimes in the United Kingdom have been against Muslims, according to a census report. 45% of all reported religious hate crimes were against Muslims in the year ending in March 2021. The previous year's percentage was similar. The 2,703 offenses against Muslims included acts targeting more than one religious group. Some acts were against people whose assumed religion was not their actual faith. Assailants assumed Sikhs and other religious adherents were Muslim. Muslim Council of Britain's Secretary General Zara Muhammad condemned the pervasive bigotry and the threat it poses, especially to young Muslims. Two Indian lawyers have been charged by local police after they released a report on anti-Muslim violence. The document, titled Humanity Under Attack in Tripura, Muslims' Lives Matter, highlights anti-Muslim violence in the state of Tripura. It also documents the vandalization of at least 12 mosques, nine shops, and three houses belonging to Muslim families. Its authors, Asrar Indori and Mukesh Kumar, were part of a four-member fact-finding team. Indori is the secretary of the National Confederation of Human Rights, and Kumar works for the Union for Civil Liberties. They have been charged with Section 13 of the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. The charges against them are criminal conspiracy, promoting enmity between groups, forgery, and provoking breach of peace. Coming up next after the break is our in-depth analysis segment on Tripura. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after these messages. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Despite the development of a COVID-19 vaccine, millions around the world will not have access. We need a vaccine that's free and available to everyone, everywhere. It's time for a people's vaccine. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs, and that's that's still not not enough enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Dad! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? Find her. Your hero needs you now, 
and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org caregiving. Welcome back. In one of our previous analysis segments, we discussed the anti-Muslim violence in Tripura, India. Let's watch. Religious freedom in India is seriously under threat when it comes to minorities. Muslims are number one to be attacked, but Christians and other communities are also facing serious pressure. Right now, in a matter of one week, two major things are happening. In the Indian state of Tripura, more than 15 mosques have been vandalized by the allies of the government itself. Vishwa Hindu Parishad, which was part of the movement, led the movement to destroy the historic Babri Mosque. It has put flags on mosques in the Indian state of Tripura. Three mosques are completely destroyed. And thousands of miles away, but, but next to capital of India, Delhi, for several weeks, these same groups, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Bajrang Dal, and other 22 organizations are campaigning and disrupting prayers by Muslims. What is going on? Why there is such a serious attack on religious freedom? We have someone who has been a, an activist, documented cases of mob lynching, yes, lynching, no, it's no longer the South 60, uh, American South of the 60s. In India right now, people are being lynched. He's documenting cases of mob lynching, hate crimes, and Islamophobia since 2017. Uh, Muhammad Asif Khan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to Muslim Network TV. So tell us what is happening in Tripura right now. Uh, let me talk about how it started. Uh, two weeks back, uh, there was violence against minority Hindu community in Bangladesh. And uh, few uh, you know, Hindu community, their houses were attacked in Bangladesh two weeks ago. So Hindu, Vishwa Hindu Parishad, which is an, just a right-wing Hindu extremist outfit, they started protest in Tripura. Tripura is a state in the India, in northeast India, which is located at uh, Indo-Bangladesh border. So during that protest, they started attacking the Muslim community of the Tripura. Like, uh, as you said, more than 15 mosques have been vandalized, three mosques have been set on fire, and uh, many shops, Muslim property have been attacked, their houses uh, were under fire and stone were pelted by the VHP and other right-wing Hindu extremist mob. So it's had, uh, it has been happening since more than one week. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Indian media, mainstream Indian media, uh, Indian political parties or international media do not pay any attention to this horrific situation since it does not draw any kind of attention into media Nobody knows about it. And <clears throat> the information which is coming out of Tripura is very less. I mean, we do not have that kind of much information regarding the regarding the situation because uh, uh, recently uh, state police has issued a statement by saying that whoever is spreading any kind of uh, inflammatory or provocative information uh, we will take action against this, uh, that person. So people are afraid. They are not uh, giving any kind of information. And uh, in uh, international or national media, Indian national media is not very much uh, interested to covering such uh, these incidents. So basically, whatever happened to Hindu minority in Bangladesh, the Hindutva group in India are taking revenge from the Indian Muslim for that violence. But in Bangladesh, by the way, BBC has a report about what's happening in Tripura of incidents. They mentioned several mosques and things like that. 
So although news is completely out from Indian media, international media, at least BBC has some news. Other places are more or less silent. But, uh, you know, in the case of Bangladesh, uh, you know, Bangladesh has uh, taken a swift step Police use firing to stop those Muslims who were attacking uh, the Hindu temple. Five Muslims died in there, uh, while there were only two Hindus uh, were injured by or died because as a result of mob attacking them. But they have arrested 500 people, including the person who is accused of placing the Quran on the. Uh, in the temple, which was used as a pretext to do those things. So Bangladeshi government has very thoroughly taken an action. Uh, what actions the Indian government has taken to protect those mosques? Uh, well, uh, Bang not only Bangladesh government, in fact, their own celebrity, influential people, and their society has taken very good stand on this violence. They have appealed for the peace and uh, they insisted that uh, the mob, uh, the people who were indulged in mob violence should be arrested as soon as possible. And uh, I, I think uh, more than 450 people were arrested by the government and law enforcement agencies in Bangladesh. But if you compare the situation with the India, uh, there is no, uh, I mean, no action has been taken against uh, uh, those people who were indulged in anti-Muslim violence in Tripura. And <clears throat> no condemnation from any political parties yet. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister of India or the Chief Minister of Tripura or the opposition uh, leaders in India did not pay attention to the situation. And as I said, the Tripura police or law enforcement agencies did nothing to stop the violence. This day I was reading an article today which said they have uh, they have banned gathering of people today. They have imposed the section 144, which is basically a privatory order, which ban the uh, which ban the gathering of the people. So today they have taken action, or maybe just one or two days ago they have they might have taken some action, but they did not do anything to stop the violence at first place. It has been happening since more than one week and they did not arrest those people who were directly responsible for it. They knew that such kind of events, such kind of rally or such kind of march will have dire consequences because <clears throat> those people were shouting inflammatory incendiary slogans. If, if you have seen the video which were coming out of Tripura, uh, there was a rally which, uh, which were taken out uh, by VHP members. They were raging slogans uh, like uh, they were abusing basically Muslims and Prophet Muhammad. I, I just can't tell you on camera what they were saying in that video against uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So <clears throat> I believe the Tripura police, law enforcement agencies and government did not take any kind of action against those people who were responsible for violence. Whatever they are doing is just just formality. I mean, uh, if Muslims were indulged in India in such kind of activity, they might have invoked sedition charges, anti-terror law, but in such case, nothing happened like that. But Tiripura, you know, the government, uh, Indian police there, they have issued a tweet uh, statement that there are no attacks on the uh, Muslims or on the mosques. Uh, you know, why, why they are taking a stand that there is no uh, activity which is even reported by BBC now, although Indian media is uh, completely silent on it? Actually... <clears throat> They are taking such kind of state to save the face of their own department and uh, the government itself. They just want to save the face of BJP government in Tripura and they do not want to take responsibility. Actually, it's a law and order issue. They fail to protect the minority. Now they are saying there is no such incident to happen in Tripura it's because they want to save the reputation of their department. They completely failed to protect the minority in Tripura. Now they are they are not taking responsibility for it. And unfortunately, as I said to you, that the information 
not coming out in in vast quantity from the uh, tripura state it was the duty of the indian uh, national media that they should go there they should have reported they should have taken videos and photos of the incident so now due to the paucity and due to the lack of the information tripura police have an upper hand you know they are claiming that no such incident happen if there was a incident why you are not showing videos or something like that and they are claiming i have read a statement they claiming that whatever video or photo you are circulating in social media belong to some other part of the country or out of india they are not from tripura and they are saying they will take action against anyone who post such stuff on social media so basically this is they are trying to cover up the entire thing tell us this i mean bbc report this morning about tripura and they do mention uh, several mosques uh, by name and uh, organizations uh, muslim organizations who, who are informing them but they have uh, photos of vishwa hindu parishad uh, carrying out uh, a procession with their names on it and they mention vishwa hindu parishad and vision ka bajrang dal tell us you know isn't this vishwa hindu parishad the same group which led the campaign to demolish historic babri mosque yes of course they they are look they are the branches of the rss rss is parent organization and bajrang dal vhp and many other organization they are branches of the same very organization and they often involved in such kind of incident like anti muslim violence whether it was the gujarat 2002 genocide or whether it was the recently last year it happened in delhi in 2020 february or babri mosque demolition or many cases of anti muslim violence they always indulge in such kind of incidents and they are now involved there too but unfortunately Uh, we have a record in india that this such kind of organization they are very much close to the establishment and they always enjoy impunity government law enforcement agency never take strict action against them this is the reality and in contrast of i will just give you an example just few days ago i think on 25th of october or 24th of october there was a match cricket match between india and pakistan uh, in the t20 world cup india lost that match to pakistan and few student uh, or few individual persons in uttar pradesh they celebrated the victory they allegedly celebrated the victory and now government is saying that we will invoke sedition case against those muslim or those kashmiri student Who, who allegedly supported or celebrated pak's victory over india so you see the contrast those people who actually indulge into violence they they enjoy impunity they do not they do not uh, book door they do not arrested under draconian laws like sedition uapa or uh, something else but when it come to the muslim even a mere whatsapp status or facebook post can attract well draconian laws like uapa or nsa or seditions etc well thank you so much asif khan for your bravery although you are not disclosing where you are in india but i understand it is important for the safety and thank you so much for standing up for peace and justice in india thank you assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam thank you thank you so much and muslim uh, mntv network for providing me this opportunity so that i can talk about the situation of uh, indian muslims on your platform thank you you welcome that's all from our washington studios tonight thank you for tuning in you can find previous episodes and more on our youtube and facebook for more content keep watching muslim network tv or visit muslimnetwork.tv assalam alaikum and good night